Welcome to the new episode of r slash ask reddit. What unforgivable act by a celebrity did the public seem to forget too easily? CeeLo Green going viral with a new song on TikTok after drugging a woman, raping her and then saying people who have really been raped remember. I knew someone who was a legal intern for the prosecutor of that case. She said they very literally had him on tape. I think it was a voicemail he left admitting to rape. I'm not sure how he got away with that. Colossal piece of He had no regrets, just excellent PR. CeeLo Green, the way he straight up admitted to raping people, because he thought it didn't count, if they were drugged, it was so disillusioning to see him still get features, or invites or media attention after that. If you're not awake, that implies consent. Absolutely evil. Someone should beat the out of him, when he's unconscious, because according to him, he's consenting to it. Soldier Boy beat a pregnant woman into having a miscarriage. He just recently did a show in my town. It was a small venue. It did not sell out. People may have forgotten what he did, but they also forgot he existed, so that's something I guess. He still shows up on podcasts and stuff from time to time, basically insisting he single-handedly created modern hip-hop. Dude is a definition of a one-hit wonder, whose biggest claim to fame was a song that white 8th graders awkwardly tried to grind to in 2008. Richards, Robert H. Forth. The heir to the estimated $14 billion fortune of the DuPont family, Richards was jailed in 2009 for abusing his 3-year-old daughter sexually. In an attempt to clear his record, the billionaire offered to take a polygraph test, nevertheless, he failed the test and ultimately admitted to the accusations. He could have faced a 30-year jail sentence, but his attorneys managed to have the accusation reduced to fourth-degree rape, earning him an 8-year sentence instead. But the court decided that he wouldn't fare well in jail, so they suspended his sentence and released him on probation. I guess the judge wasn't concerned about how the three-year-old had fared or would going forward. Atrocious. Floyd May with the beat the out of his former girlfriend and got away with it because the judge allowed him to train for a fight he was headlining. Don't forget he did it with guns on the bed and kids present. He committed multiple felonies and got a slap on the wrist. What the hell? Boy George abducted and tortured a man in 2007. He what? Handcuffed him to a radiator I believe. Film reviewer, journalist, and executive in the film business, Philip Burke. Assaulted Brendan Fraser sexually, but he was spared, since he claimed it was all in joke, and had no sexual intent. If any of us had raised that defense, we would have all been imprisoned underground. I'm so glad, that came back up with his Oscar win. People were talking about it. Is that why he disappeared for a long time? Why the f does Chris Brown still have a career? I don't think people have forgotten, rather, they just don't care, which to me is arguably worse. Same with R. Kelly all those years. He got his commupants now, but R. Kelly in the early 2000s peeing on a 15 year old girl and recording it. People seemingly forgot and forgave him so quickly, Boondocks did an entire episode about it. Macklemore was kind enough to remind us with thrift shop lol. But it's weird how Roman Polanski drugged and anally raped a 13 year old girl, then fled the country to avoid prison, and Hollywood basically said, that's fine. It wasn't until 43 years later that the Motion Picture Academy finally expelled him after deciding child rape was no longer okay, but for decades Hollywood actors, industry executives, and award committees ignored the fact that he was a fugitive rapist and even signed letters of support for him. They ignored a lot of that in the industry. Chuck Berry has been lauded as the king of rock and roll. He's also a voyeuristic sicko, who installed hidden cameras within the women's restroom of his restaurant. In his even younger days, he also did time for transporting a 14-year-old girl across state lines for <laughs> Not state lines. He took a 13 to 14-year-old girl from a bar in Mexico to his own bar in Street Louis. She managed to get away two weeks later, and went straight to the cops. He got arrested, and did time for the Man Act, a nasty law in its own right. He human trafficked a minor girl to a different country, to work in a bar, let alone anything else. After reading the comments, I feel like I've been living under a rock. Disgusting world we live in. If it's any consolation, it's always been disgusting, but at least now it's easier to hear about the terrible things some people are trying to brush under the rug. Yep, see Steven Tyler, a lot of stuff coming back to him. 
Curtis Kurt Johnson, S. The billionaire, whose family ran S.C. Johnson, a home goods company, was taken into custody in March 2011 on charges of molestation. The billionaire, whose net worth was estimated to be $4.2 billion in 2019, avoided a 40-year prison sentence and was fined $6,000. Instead, he was sentenced to three months in prison. Johnson was spared, not just a brief jail sentence, but also a fine that little affected his wealth and the requirement to register as a offender. He paid off the victim. This all happened in my hometown, and it was quite scandalous, and even though the events were widely known, once the payment was made, and the victim no longer wanted to pursue the charges, it was dropped. Also, Kurt is a horrible human being. He openly slapped a secretary in front of a room full of executives, and was admonished at the time by his father, but was allowed to keep his position within the company. They have tried to hide Kurt for decades. Nikki Minaj supporting her rapist husband and rapist brother, trying to keep her brother from going to prison, by harassing his victim with her family. Absolute trash. And she had a child with a child predator like where is her brain. Sadly, when women act like that, it's often because they were preyed on themselves and normalized it to cope. Doesn't excuse it. It's just awful. 28-year-old Jimmy Page in a relationship with a 13-year-old. Beastie Boys didn't let that one go. Can you elaborate? Not OP, but, and if I played guitar, I'd be Jimmy Page. The girl is I like are underage. Shh, check it. They seem to be bragging they like the same, at the time. I've seen a new rise in awareness surrounding it in the last couple years, but for like 30 years no one talked about how Carol Malone knocked up a 13 year old while he was in college. Edit, originally thought thought it was when he was in the NBA. The NBA circle jerk is doing their part to remind everybody about this. Jack Nicholson beat a worker so bad in the 90s that she suffered permanent injuries. Roman Polanski also raped that girl at Nicholson's house after a photo shoot. But he's never associated with the story where he was is like a footnote. I'm pretty sure he also abandoned his daughter. Ugh. People seem to really seem to ignore how many musicians from the 60s, 70s, and 80s were blatantly taking advantage of children. Especially the musicians that are popular enough to basically be memes. That stuff probably wouldn't fly today, considering how Drake's texts are seen by the public, but I'm always surprised it isn't brought up more. There's a famous picture of Led Zeppelin, celebrating John Bonham's 30th birthday with a table of underage girls. Also, Steven Tyler wrote in his book about getting an underage girl's parents to sign some kind of documents allowing him to take her across state lines in the 70s. Remember when a 16 year old girl overdosed in Don Henley's house? He pled guilty to minor misdemeanor charges and then wrote a song about how mean the media was to him. Because I feel like almost no one does. Holy this is the first time I'm hearing this. That's what he wrote Dirty Laundry about. Boohoo, I was busted, and the media reported it. Dr. Dre hitting female reporter D. Barnes in the face and attempting to throw her down a flight of stairs. Eminem even jokingly references this in Guilty Conscience with Dr. Dre on the song. You gonna take advice from somebody who slapped D. Barnes? Chris Brown beating up Rahanna. Every single thing Chris Brown has done up to this moment. It's not like his behavior improved after he beat up Rahanna. He broke her face. How Chris Brown hasn't been completely shunned by society is beyond me. He fully attempted to kill Rahanna, and people still fawn over him because he has an alright voice. Complete and utter gutter cunt. He has an alright voice. This part is the most confusing to me. I can kinda sorta understand defending Kanai's music, or whatever, but Chris Brown. Come one. He's not talented. His songs are vaguely catchy, but that's it. He's a human turd. I genuinely don't see any reason why we should respect him at all. The current first lady of France, Bridget Macron, literally groomed her own husband when he was a 15 year old boy and she was in her 40s. She was his school teacher and acted extremely unprofessionally when she started sleeping with her own underage student. The boy Manuel's parents told her to stay away from their son as they did not appreciate a 40 year old woman preying on their 15 year old boy. She didn't care. She continued grooming poor Emmanuel and even pressured him into marrying her. Nobody is talking about this. 
Apparently it's considered okay by many people in France, because they love each other, because look he married her, when he was an adult. Boys can get groomed too. No this was never okay. Emmanuel Macron is a victim of grooming and possibly CSA. This is such an underrated response, it's so f***ed up and everyone here acts, like it's just normal. Like Shocked by the lack of mentions to Jared Leto thus far. Doesn't he run some sort of weird cult? I think he's trying to form one. I know the music camp you set up was nothing, like it was advertised, and most parents who sent their kids demanded their money back. Didn't Corey Feldman say Charlie Sheen sexually abused him? I feel like that kinda just died and nobody remembers, or did anything about it. Corey Feldman said, Charlie Sheen groomed or aped Corey Haim, they were 19 and 13, respectively, and blamed that for Haim's downward spiral. But that was a week long story at best. I think both the Corey men got assaulted by Sheen, when they were all teens doing the movies early in their careers. I'm not surprised with Sheen having a viral load, now that he's older as well. Vince McMahon being found out, to have given something like 15 million dollar dollars in hush money to women he raped. Vince McMahon covered up a ring boy molestation scandal in WWF. He might have also paid money to make, Jimmy Snuka's murder charges go away. Vince McMahon is a reprehensible person. Director and child rapist Roman Polanski. He romanced a 15 year old at 43, then raped a 13 year old, pled guilty to it, fled France to avoid prison, and has been on the run ever since, still working, still getting awards and praise. I think groomed is a more fitting word than romanced. Tupac dropped his gun and killed a 6 year old and gang raped a woman. Shame this comment isn't higher up. Love his music, but he clearly did awful things. I looked up a video interviewing the victim one day and just reading that comment section seriously f***ed up my mood that day. Caitlyn Jenner killed someone. So did Vince Neil. South Park didn't let her forget it. Buckle up Buckaroos runs over 4 more people on the way out, bringing the total to 9 for this episode. John Landis got 2 children and Vic Morrow killed, while filming a segment of Twilight Zone, the movie. He was breaking child labor laws, by having the kids on set in the first place, and according to their parents, never told them, that they'd be near explosives or the helicopter. His next movie was Trading Places, which made a mint, and he also directed Michael Jackson's thriller video, so he was not criminally convicted, and he did not take much of a hit to his career. I may be misremembering parts of this story, but I recall reading essentially the following. Chevy Chase on the set of one of John Landis' films, I think Animal House, was my up, and was talking about John Landis. Landis angrily said something like, I'll kill you. To which Chase said, I don't see any helicopters. David Letterman had a bedroom installed at his studio, so he could have with interns, and so he could cheat without his wife finding out. Did no one clue him, in that you could just in the office? He liked to snuggle after Travis Scott. So many people died and he knew. Everyone suddenly just forgot. His lack of remorse was alarming. The apology video says it all. He kept hitting his head with the driest lack of care saying I'm sorry for what I did. Everything Charlie Sheen did. Charlie. You're a monster. Every moment of your life looks like the first two minutes of Law and Order. SVU. Anthony Giselnik. Vince Neil of Motley Crue knowingly drove drunk. I, and sleep deprived after a three day bender, and killed his good friend and roadie Razzle Dingley. They were on their way back from a liquor run. Dingley was holding dozens of bottles of liquor on his lap. Neil lost control of the car, and veered into oncoming traffic going 65 in a 25 miles per hour zone. He'd been awake for three days, taking enormous quantities of cocaine, and blew a .17 back at the scene. He was given a fine and served 15 days of a 30 day sentence. Lol. So I was GTA for a college level course on rock and roll, and the final assignment was some sort of podcast. This kid talked about all the disgusting <laughs> that Motley Crue did, instead of analyzing the actual music, in a way that was so disgustingly romanticized. I straight up didn't know what to do with it, and had to give it to the real prof to grade. Luck Besson. Besson's second wife was actress and director Manuel Lebesco, whom he started dating when he was 32, and she was 15, 
25. They married in late 1992 when Lebesco, 16, was pregnant with their daughter Shanna, who was born on the 3rd of January. 1993, 26, Lebesco later claimed that their relationship inspired Besson's film Leon, 1994, where the plot involved the emotional relationship between an adult man and a 12-year-old girl, 25 there. Marriage ended in 1997 when Besson became involved with actress Mila Jovovich during the filming of The Fifth Element. Roman Polanski, on March 10, 1977, 43 year old film director Roman Polanski was arrested and charged in Los Angeles with six offenses against Samantha Gailey, Naojima, 2, a 13 year old girl, 3, and lawful sexual intercourse with a minor, rape by use of drugs, perversion, sodomy, a lewd and lascivious act upon a child under the age of 14, and furnishing a controlled substance to a minor. At his arraignment, Polanski pleaded not guilty to all charges. 4, but later accepted a plea bargain, whose terms included dismissal of the five more serious charges in exchange for a guilty plea to the lesser charge of engaging in unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor. 5. Polanski underwent a court-ordered psychiatric evaluation. 6. And he was placed on probation. 7. However, upon learning that he was likely to face imprisonment and subsequent deportation. 8. 9. Polanski became a fugitive from justice fleeing to England, and then France in February. 1978, hours before he was due to be formally sentenced, 10, since then, Polanski has mostly lived in France, and has avoided visiting any countries likely to extradite him to the United States, but none of this stopped Hollywood from giving him a standing ovation at the Academy Awards in recent years. Tom Cruise being a member of a cult that disappears people. A frightening number of celebrities are a part of that cult, including at least one of the voice actors of the Simpsons family. Never meet your heroes everyone. I met Weird AL, and he was awesome. Also never hero worship people who are very talented known for doing one thing that you don't otherwise know as people. Tariq Hill. Extremely popular NFL player who threw his pregnant girlfriend across a room. This. Tons of professional athletes are entitled garbage human beings who have been treated differently, and given a pass on their behavior, since they were teens, because they can run fast, and catch a ball. Adrian Peterson charged with a felony for beating his kid. Another kid was killed by someone else. Michael Vick and his dogs. Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers openly admitting to subbing a 14 year old, while in his 20s with no repercussions, and being charged with sexual battery in 89, only to pay fines, and no other repercussions. There is a plethora of other accusations against him as well. His birthday just passed, and it seems he is loved as ever by almost everyone. That's not surprising, because his own father arranged to have him, Anthony, lose his virginity to a hooker when he was 11 or 12, and introduced him to drugs even before that. Chris Brown beat the out of Rahanna, and people still love him, and by his music and I have no idea why. I've seen so many comments from his fans saying, if Rihanna can forgive him then we can too. Or whatever they tell themselves to justify it. He literally has her beat up face, tattooed on his neck people. It blows my mind. I didn't know about the tattoo. That's disgusting. The world seemed to look past Kobe's transgressions real fast, when his hello crashed to the ground. People had looked past Kobe's rape cases 4 years before his death. His wife couldn't see past the $5 million 8 carat diamond. Tupac raped someone and served time for it. Can't believe someone brought up Tupac. He always gets a pass in these threads. He also had his crew stomp a movie director. Oh, and he got a 6 year old shot and killed. It was his gun and honestly he was probably the one who pulled the trigger but only had to pay fines in civil court. Tupac was a legitimately terrible person who gets an eternal pass because he died young. The many rock and roll pedophiles over the years. Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis, Jimmy Page, Steven Tyler to name a few. All had penchants for 14 year old or so girls who many of their parents willingly allowed their girls to go off with these grown men. Came to the comments for Jerry Lee. They made a whole movie that romanticized their whole incestuous or underage relationship. I remember watching a show interviewing the woman who was also his freaking cousin and it made me really sad.
that she blamed herself for outing the situation to the public as a teen. If I recall she told a questioning reporter or paparazzi type that she was his wife. She wished she just said she was so and so's daughter, so the whole situation could have been different. Chris Brown. Edit, little story for y'all. So I was working in a pretty or office, and I had this beautiful co-worker, doesn't really matter, but I'm a male. Anywho, one day she starts talking about how she watched this Chris Brown documentary, and how he was actually the victim, not the girl or girls whom he abused and bragged about. I said something like, um, didn't he abuse Rahanna and literally get a tattoo of her black and blue face on himself? She responded with some fluff about he's the victim. The next day she said, some guy hollered at her from his car, while she was getting lunch, and he was just her type. Never looked at her the same way after the Chris Brown comments, but being into some dude yelling at her from his car just cemented it. Just Eric Clapton in general. What did he do? Do we have any foreigners in the audience tonight? If so, please put up your hands. So where are you? Well wherever you all are, I think you should all just leave. Not just leave a hall, leave our country, I don't want you here, in the room, or in my country. Listen to me, man. I think we should send them all back. Stop Britain from becoming a black colony. Get the foreigners out. Get the wogs out. Get the Coens out. Keep Britain white. Eric Clapton. Stone Cold Steve Austin beat the out of his wife, Deborah 20 years ago. He's still a beloved figure in wrestling that everyone gets excited to see. I think the difference with Steve is that he has been open, honest, and contrite about the whole thing. It was a thing to do, and he was rightly convicted, but his in-ring career was over by that point, and he never succeeded in Hollywood. It's not like he was on opera the next week lying about it. He's neither gone on to do anything like that. In fact I can't recall him being in trouble at all since it happened, nor is it thought he had been like that before. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think that resulted from Steve making bad decisions about alcohol and drugs, while he was reeling from his in-ring career ending so suddenly, rather than being a lifelong piece of like most of the people in this thread. Shia Lebalf is a violent alcoholic who has been arrested multiple times, usually for attacking people. One time he had to be muzzled during an arrest, because he wouldn't stop spitting on everyone. During another arrest. He accused the African American police officer for arresting him, for being white, and told the officer he was going to hell for being black. He's currently facing a lawsuit for assaulting multiple women. Okay but also this killed his career. James Franco. I'm shocked by the amount of people who still defend him. Well, Seth Rogen dropped him publicly which is a big deal, since their duo was a cash cow, and I don't think he's been in too many major releases since. Come on. Rogen knew the wild time, but dropped him to save face. Thank you.